So if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I just wanted to give you a quick idea of what this video is all about. It's pretty much just a summary of all the events in the main story of Pokemon Sun and Moon. I'll talk about some of the endgame stuff too. I figured this would be helpful for people who are halfway into a save file that they haven't played in like 3 years, and just want to get caught up on where they are in the story. Or for people who are just curious as to what happens in this story, maybe they've never played the game before. So this video is kind of long this time, so go ahead and grab a snack or a tasty beverage and get comfortable. And I hope you enjoy the video. Alrighty, so here we are in the Alolan Islands today. Anyhow, as we get started, we meet Professor Kakui through a video call. He basically introduces you to Pokemon and stuff, whatever. After your video call with the professor, it cuts into some cinematic. Some girl is getting chased around in what looks like a laboratory of some sort. She's holding a bag. These guys make a bunch of weird ass faces and chase her until she's finally cornered. She's panicking and then her bag starts to glow and then they're like, huh? <laughs> After the bag starts to glow, the camera pans up and that's the intro cutscene. And now we're back to the Alolan Islands. You and your mother just moved in from Kanto. She has Meowth to wake you up. Now that you're awake, Professor Kakui just comes barging in. Nice shirt, bro. Anyhow, Professor Kakui wants you to meet the island Kahuna in Iki Town. Apparently, the island Kahuna likes to give Pokemon to new villagers. You and the professor take a stroll down Route 1 until you finally get to Iki Town. It turns out that the Kahuna isn't around, so he gives you a little history of the town. Iki Town is where the island Kahuna lives. They have festivals here to worship the legendary Pokemon of the island. His name is Tabu Koko. He protects all of Mili Mili, the island you live on. Since you can't find the island Kahuna, he asks you to go look around for him. Fine. When you step into town, you see that girl that you saw in the cinematic earlier. She's talking to somebody, and then she heads up to the ruins. So we're gonna go follow her, and off she goes running to the bridge. Some mysterious looking Pokemon pops out of her bag, and it seems to be enjoying the fresh air until a bunch of Spearows come and start attacking it. We gotta do something. So she asks us to help, so we cover the Pokemon, and boom. Hey, it's Tapu Koko. Luckily, he was there to save us. She asked you to keep her Pokemon a secret. I guess she doesn't want anybody seeing it. After Tapu Koko leaves, the girl's Pokemon finds something on the ground. The girl thinks it must be yours, so she hands it to you, and then you head back to town. Once you and the girl have made it back to town, you meet back up with Professor Kakui. The girl happens to be an assistant to Kakui, so he introduces you both to each other. Her name is Lily, and she calls her Pokemon Nebi. The Kahuna arrives back. He says he may have seen Tapu Koko flying around, and then you explain what just happened to him. To celebrate your heroic deeds of saving the Pokemon, he decides to give you your first Pokemon. So I went ahead with Poplio. Now that you have a Pokemon, the professor gives you a Pokedex. So we head on home so that we can show the Pokemon to our mother when you bump into this kid. The first thing he says is, let's battle. So, we battle. He has a Litten, so it was pretty easy. This kid's name is Howl. He's actually the grandson of the Kahuna, Hala. And believe it or not, this kid is your friendly rival in this game. Who would have guessed? After the battle, the Kahuna invites you to join them for a festival the next day. The next day, Professor Kakui barges right on in again to get you for the festival. Once you make it to town, you go ahead and start the ceremony. In this festival, they want to have a battle to try to appease the Guardian. So you and Hao get ready to battle. Before you face each other, the Kahuna gives you what's called a Z-Ring. It's sort of like the Mega Ring in X and Y. Oh no, this time he has a Pichu. So anyways, after I lose the battle, the festival's complete and we all go home. After the festival, the doorbell rings. Who could it be? I swear if it's Kakui again. Oh, it's Lily. I guess the professor wants her to show you the way to his lab because he wants to give you something. On your way to the professor's lab, Lily explains a few things to you. She says she's just staying at the professor's place temporarily and working as an assistant just to kind of help him out. And apparently, the Pokemon Nebi is actually named Cosmog. She again asks you to keep it a secret, and she also trusts the Kahuna and the professor to keep it secret too. Once you get there, there's a bunch of loud noises. I'm just gonna assume the professor's training with the Pokemon. Once you get inside, he upgrades your Pokedex to have a Rotom inside it. How cool! Hal wanders on in, I guess that's just something that Alolans do. And now that everybody's here, he explains to you what the island challenge is all about. So rather than 8 gym badges, this game has 7 island trials. 
The island trials are a little different in the sense that instead of gym leaders, there's trial captains. Usually they'll give you a task in which you have to battle a specific Pokemon in like a cave or something. After each trial, you receive a Z crystal rather than a gym badge. But there's more than 7 Z crystals, there's actually 18 total, one for each Pokemon type. And this is what you'll be using your Z ring for. The other 11 Z crystals are obtained through other various tasks or whatnot. Anyhow, now that that's explained, the professor wants you to go to trainer school. Screw that, but that's where we're gonna go. So once you make it to the trainer school, the professor and Lily meet up there with you. The teacher named Emily set up some sort of game for you where you have to battle four of her students as part of some sort of test. So you go searching around the whole school battling the four students and once you're done you get a TM. Afterwards you have to battle the teacher. Make sure you have some Pokemon to deal with that Magnemite. After the battle, you meet one of the island trial captains. His name is Ilima and he's waiting for you, so let's get ready to go. Once you've finished at the school, all the students there thank you and wish you the best of luck on your island challenge. Thanks. Afterwards, Lily wants to show you around the town. This is Haole City. It seems to be based off of Waikiki Beach in Honolulu. After you and the others do a little bit of exploring, you overhear a couple people talking about some Team Skull group. We should go check it out. When you get to the marina, you find Captain Elima, you talk to him, and then a couple of these Team Skull thugs come walking up to you, and they threaten to take all your Pokemon. They remind me of Malibu's Most Wanted. Anyhow, you and Captain Elima battle them, and then they run off. Then Captain Elima wants to battle you to see if you're ready for his trial. After you beat him, you meet Lily and have a quick conversation, and then you head up Route 2. As you battle your way through Route 2, a Deli Bird stops you and asks you to help it real quick. Some Team Skull guy is trying to steal a bunch of berries from this dude. Why the hell are there penguins in a tropical island? Anyhow, you finally make it to the trial, and now we can get this started. Once you enter into the trial, it's not like your typical gym. In this trial, you have to battle a few wild Pokemon before you can progress to the back of the cavern. These little bastards keep hiding in their caves. Get out of there! You get ambushed by those Team Skull guys from before, and they try to battle you real quick to ruin your trial. Once you beat them, they freak out and they try to catch the last two Pokemon before you can battle them. This actually makes it easier for you to pass through the trial. Once you make it to the back, you have to face this giant Pokemon. This Gumshoes is this trial's totem Pokemon. Each trial has a totem Pokemon that defends the Z-Crystal within its domain. Once you've beaten the totem Pokemon, you get to collect the Z-Crystal. So anyways, after the battle, Alima comes and congratulates you, and he says he wants to meet you on Route 3. Once you step out of the cavern, Ilima has the gate open for you so you can pass through Route 3. Kakui walks through and he gives you a short demonstration on how Z-Crystals work, and then he tells you that Lily is missing, so you guys gotta go track her down. You find her in some meadow and her Cosmog or Nebby got away from her again, and you have to help her get it back to safety. Once that's done and done, Hal meets up with you and Lily and you have to battle him real quick. It's time for the rematch! I ain't losing this time. So you finally beat Hao and then Kakui comes back to you guys. So as part of the island challenge, once you've beaten all the trials on the island, this island only has one trial, you have to face the island's kahuna. So now you head back to Iki City and there he is waiting for you. Bring it on old man. He uses fighting Pokemon. Facing the kahuna of the island is considered a grand trial, so technically you'll still get a Z crystal from beating him. Once you win, you've completed the grand trial. I should have probably mentioned before that they do this little dance to activate the Z crystal and they teach it to you. Some of them are pretty outrageous. You also get this item called the Ride Pager. With this Ride Pager, you could summon a Tauros to charge through and break all these rocks. This is this game's version of Rock Smash because there's no HMs in this game. You get more and more Pokemon for your Ride Pager as you go and they fulfill various HMs. So in this game, no Pokemon are doomed to be HM slaves. That's right, I'm looking at you. <coughs> Anyhow, now that you're all done here on Mele Mele Island, we can head over to the marina in Haole City, and we can head over to the next island. So after a nice little cruise on our way over to Akala Island, we land in Hea Hea City. You and the homies are kicking back when two women come and introduce themselves. This is Olivia, she's this island's kahuna, and then this is Malo, she's actually one of the island's captains. So you're going to be battling both of them at some point. Easy peasy. After a short bit of exploring, Lily asks you if you'd be willing to accompany her to the ruins of the island. Apparently Nebby is actually really excited to go see it, and seeing that she's not a trainer, it makes sense for you to accompany or escort her. Fine, I guess I'll take you to the ruins. Only for Nebby though. She says she'll be waiting over in the hotel. I'm ready to go now, let's just get this over with. Oh, hey. So this is Dexio and this is Sina. A beautiful name for a beautiful- 
Wait, I'm having deja vu. Apparently Lily has somebody to meet in the hotel, so we're just gonna head down Route 4 and do some trials instead. So you make your way through Route 4 until you get to Paniola Town. You have a quick battle with Howe here, and then you go to the ranch in the back. Malo is actually working back here. She updates your app so that you could use Stoutland. Stoutland will sniff out items from the ground, kind of like an item finder. Malo actually asks you to go up Route 5 and seek out Lana. She's another captain on the island. But why can't I just do your trial right now? So she runs off. Guess we gotta go do Lana's trial. We pass on through Route 5 until we find Hal battling some guy. This guy is a literal edgelord. He beats Hal in the battle and then he wants to battle you next. His name is Gladian. Apparently he works for Team Skull. He has this really weird looking Pokemon called Type Null. Anyhow, once the battle is over, he seems to be really upset for no reason. Like he can't just accept that you and Hal are trainers who are training for fun. Then two other Team Skull members come up. They don't seem to really like Gladian. They talk to him like he's a kid and they treat him like he's an outsider. They say their boss likes him and that they only really keep him around as hired work and stuff. So after they're done clowning him, they all leave and now you can pass through to get to the next trial. When you finally make it to Brooklet Hill, you meet Lana. She immediately asks you for a favor and asks you to follow her down some trail. Okay. She shows you to some splashing water and you have to go inspect it. Before that though, she updates your ride pager and you get to ride Lapras now. Hell yeah. So we go check out the splashing and it's just these little Pokemon called Wishy Washy. She seems to be really disappointed because she was hoping that it would be some young buff dude swimming around in the water. Anyhow, you finally get to the last splashing water and holy shit. By the way, she secretly led you into her trial, so this is the totem Pokemon you have to face. These wishy-washy school together and get super big. After you've beaten the wishy-washy, you get your water Z crystal. She also gives you a fishing pole too, so damn, she's really hooking us up. So since you're all done with the trial, we head on back south. We kick these Sadoodoos out of the way. So we see this girl in her muds deal, bickering with some Team Skull thugs. I guess they were trying to steal this Driftblim. So anyways, we help her out by battling them. Her name is Hapu. She thanks you and then she heads on out. And then we end up going to this place called the Battle Royale Dome. You see Gladian as you're heading on to the entrance, and once you step inside you meet this masked man called the Royal. Turns out Hal's already here, so you do a short little version of the Battle Royale. It's basically just a four-way battle. After the battle, one of the island captains comes up and says he looks forward to battling you at his trial. I guess that's where we're going next. So you head north of the Battle Royale Dome on the Route 7 and you go to Wella Volcano Park. You climb up the volcano and there he stands, a stoic, shirtless, fire hair looking dude. So you have to watch these Marowak dance and you have to guess the differences of each of the photos. This is the hardest part of the game, it's insanely difficult and it took me many tries to get it. This totem Pokemon is Salazzle, it's a poison fire type. Once you're done you get the Z Crystal for fire. Kiawe also updates your ride pager and now you can fly on a Charizard. Good, I'm tired of running around everywhere. Since you're done with Kiawe's trial, we can go ahead and head north through this gate. As you're passing through Route 8 to get to the next trial, you bump into this scientist dude. Oh wait, that's Kores. Inside of this movable building, there's these women who claim to be part of this Aether Foundation. They work in Pokemon conservation, so they do a lot of research on Pokemon as well. Anyhow, moving on. So we get to the Lush Jungle, where Malo's trial is. Lush Jungle, and she's got green hair. Gee, I wonder what type this is going to be. So once you get inside the jungle, Molo wants you to go around and collect four different ingredients for some sort of dish. Is this even part of the trial? Each ingredient that you get, you gotta battle another Pokemon, and then finally you get everything for the dish. Oh look, it's Lana and Kiawe. Seems like they brought stuff too for the dish. I guess she calls it Molo Special. How original. So she wants you to prepare the food, so you gotta smash it, crush it, and turn it into goo. Dude, what the fuck? The smell from the food actually lures in the totem Pokemon, Lurantis. Just make sure you have a Pokemon that can take down its health really fast, because it heals. Anyhow, now you're done with the fourth trial. You get your next Z-Crystal, and now we can head off to face the Kahuna. But before we go there, we need to meet the professor at the Dimensional Research Lab. When you get there, you see Lily outside playing around with the little Cosmog. You guys go inside, and you meet the professor. More importantly though, he introduces you to his wife, or other professor, dimensional research lady. He wants her to give you some of the history of some of the strange phenomena that's been going on around these islands. Apparently there's evidence of this thing called an ultra wormhole, in which extremely powerful Pokemon, even stronger than the deities on the islands, come through, and basically start attacking the world. That's scary. 
You also get a little insight as to why Lily is staying with the professor. Professor Burnett found Lily washed away on the shore one day. Apparently Lily has been seeking out help as to how to get Cosmog back to its home place. She had nowhere to go, so she took her into the lab to help her research the Cosmog and let her stay with Professor Kukui in the meantime. I guess Lily sees her as her true mother-like figure. Anyhow, we don't have time for this family drama. Let's go find this kahuna and show her who's boss. So we have to pass through the Diglett Cave, which is just south of Hie Hie City. So you step inside the cave and then... There she is! So we're finally about to start the grand trial, just kidding. She asks you to meet her in her shop in Kony Kony City, which is just past the Diglett Cave. Fine, I guess we can wait. As you pass through the cave, you bump into two of those Pokemon conservation people, part of the Aether Foundation. Supposedly the Diglets have been acting a lot more wild than normal lately, and these guys are saying that Team Skull is the cause for that. Kinda suspicious. That guy looks familiar too. When we get near the end of the cave, we bump into two Team Skull members. Apparently they're getting attacked by the Diglets too, and they don't even really seem to know what's going on. So after you beat the Team Skull guys, we can finally go through the exit and make our way to Kony Kony City. When we step into town, we follow a Purple Pass into the shop. The Purple Pass has a letter for you from Olivia. There's been a change of plans I guess, and she basically wants you to meet her at the Ruins of Life just past Memorial Hill. Wait a second, she's gone? Yep, she's gone, it's gonna be one of those. So off to Memorial Hill. You pass on through Memorial Hill when, hey it's Team Skull. Oh wait, never mind, she's not. Oh, there's Team Skull and the Aether Foundation. So you help out the Aether guys, and this dude in green wants to see you at the Hano Grand Resort. Cool. You're done here now, so let's head over to the ruins. On your way there, you get stopped by this girl. Her name is Plumeria. She's one of the Team Skull admins. After you battle her, she leaves all angry. We'll probably see her again at some point. So we can finally go to the ruins when- Oh my god! Now it's Lily and Burnett interrupting us. Where the hell is the Kahuna? Oh, there she is. I guess this island's deity, Tapu Lele, called her here to assist with something. So after a short catwalk, we can finally face the Kahuna. I'm surprised she doesn't use her Probo Pass. Thankfully, we have Rion here, so, so this makes for a pretty easy battle. Now that we have the Rock Sea Crystal, we're finally done with all the trials on this island. But we still gotta go to the Hano Grand Resort, so once we finish up here in the ruins, that's where we're headed next. Once we arrive, we see that this hotel is very high class. The man with the green glasses is named Faba. He wants to take you to the Aether Paradise, which is a man-made island in the middle of the ocean. He won't take no for an answer. What did I even do to make him want to show me his lab anyways? So we decide to go when How, Olivia, and Kukui show up. Before you guys go, Olivia talks about how she's the island kahuna, and she sees all the children as her own children, and it's her duty to protect them. Yet, she's willing to let two children travel with some stranger to some random island in the middle of the ocean with no supervision, cause Kukui ain't going either. What the hell are they thinking? Anyhow, you take a ferry to the Aether Paradise. It seems kinda plain. I guess he's got work to do or something, so he has his assistant named Wick give you a tour of the whole facility. Faba and all the rest of the guys that work there seem really creepy and they're very insistent that their plans are to save Pokemon, but Wick actually seems like a nice lady, so it's kind of hard to judge exactly how you should feel about these people. Anyhow, you make it to the top of the facility. Supposedly the president is up here, so we finally get to meet them. And here she is, the president of the Aether Foundation. She kind of looks like Cynthia. She seems to be almost overzealous with her love for caring for Pokemon. It's kind of weird. Anyhow, she introduces herself. Her name is Lusamine. She seems like a pretty decent person, but again, like Faba, she's very insistent that her goal is to save the Pokemon of the world. But they seem fine to me. As you start to get to know her better, there seems to be like an earthquake. What the hell is going on? An ultra wormhole opens right inside of the facility, and some weird jellyfish looking monster comes out. So you battle this mysterious monster, and then it disappears. After the Pokemon disappears, Lusamine has this kind of malice look on her face. The hell is that all about? Anyways, after that whole ordeal, Lusamine asks Wick to arrange a ferry for you and Howe to sell to the next island on your island challenge. Before you go, Wick gives you and Howe a gift for the road. That's nice. Anyhow, now it's off to Ula Ula Island. When we get to the island, we have a quick battle with Howe. And afterwards, I guess the professor wants to meet you guys at Melee Garden. He pretty much just tells you to meet him at Route 10 in the bus stop. But before that, Lily wants you to go to the library with her. So, yay, let's go read books. 
In front of the library, you bump into Hapu and her Mudsdale again. How about that? Inside, while Lily is looking for a specific book, some girl walks up and points out what she's looking for. Her name is Asa Rula. Anyhow, Lily reads the book and it basically explains the legends of some of the Ultra Deities. It's just like what happened before. In the book it says that a hole opened in the sky and a Pokemon called the Sun Devourer came out and battled against all the island's deities, winning. It also says there's a Pokemon for the moon as well. Anyways, enough of this crap, let's head to Route 10 so that we can continue our island challenge. When you get to the bus stop, there's a couple Team Skull members trying to steal the sign for some reason. Once we've dealt with them, we take the bus up the mountain. Now that we're on top of Hokulani, there's a view that the professor wants to show us. On the other island, there's another mountain that's even taller than the one that we're on. It's called Lanakila. I guess the professor wants to establish a Pokemon League for the Alolan Islands. And he wants the Kahunas as the Elite Four members. That's pretty cool. Anyhow, the reason we're up here is because the Observatory is here, and that's supposedly where we start our next trial. Outside, there's this guy named Malane. The professor introduces us to him. I guess they did their own island challenge together when they were younger. He tests you to see if you're ready to take the trial. After you win, he takes you inside so you can talk to the next trial's captain. This kid's name is Sophocles. He's a nerd who makes machines and stuff. He uses some machine to actually call the totem Pokemon straight to the observatory. But when he does it, the power goes out and a bunch of Pokemon start pouring in and you have to battle them all. Finally, the totem Pokemon arrives, Vika Volt. Once you've finished, you get yourself the Electric Z Crystal. To make things even better, you also get the Steel Z Crystal from Malane. Hell yeah! So now that we're done, Malane gives you this mask that you gotta take back to the professor in Melee Garden. Inside the garden, we see two Team Skull guys messing with the professor. He could probably whoop their asses, to be honest. Then the Team Skull boss comes up. His name is Guzma. What a weird ass name. He says the professor is stupid for wanting to create a Pokemon League and then you have to battle him. He uses bug type Pokemon, nothing too flashy. Anyhow, now that you're done, they do their little bad guy monologue and they run off. Acerola and Lily drop by again. Acerola drags Lily to go shopping and then Kakui goes up to Lanakila Mountain. So now we're on our own again to head over to the next trial. Since we have the electric Z crystal, we can pass through the gate on Route 11. As you head over to your next trial, you and Howe are talking when Gladian interrupts your conversation. He asks you guys if you've heard of a Pokemon named Cosmog, and he says Team Skull is trying to find it. Screw off, bro. It's none of your business. But then he says he wants you guys to protect it if you do find it, and to not let Team Skull have it. And he even wonders how Team Skull knows about Cosmog. How do you know about Cosmog? Anyways, it seems that we're in agreement on something, so he leaves you guys alone. Interesting. But since Team Skull now knows about Cosmog, that means Lily is potentially in a lot of danger. But anyways, we have an island challenge to do, so let's head over to our next trial. So Team Skull was formed by one of the old kahunas. That's weird. So anyways, you head up to this Aether house, and you're immediately challenged to a battle by some kids. Once you beat them, Acerula shows up, and she's ready to start your trial. On your way out the door, you see Lily getting harassed by a Team Skull thug. Hey, leave her alone. I guess he saw something moving around in her bag and wants to steal it. Once you've saved Lily, you can follow Acerula to the next trial. She's the captain of the Ghost Trial, so she likes to have her trial in this abandoned supermarket. It looks like something right out of Fallout. You have to take photos of the ghost Pokemon and then battle them. Not gonna lie, this one gets a little creepy. The totem Pokemon this time is Mimikyu, and no, he's not electric type. Once you're done, you finally get the Ghost Z Crystal. Anyways, now that we're done with the trial, let's head back to the Aether House and check on Lily. When you get there, Team Skull's back again. Blue Maria's with them this time. Once you've beaten her in a battle, she gets all angry and stuff, and she also reveals that she stole one of the Pokemon. Did they get Cosmog? Nah, they took the little girl's young goose. But I guess the only way to save this girl's Pokemon is to go to Po Town and go to the Team Skull base all by herself. Great. Acerola tells you to seek out some guy in a Komodo for some help to get over to Po Town. Okay. So I wonder who this guy is. Holy shit! It's Count Chocula! What a legend. Anyhow, he updates your ride pager and gives you a Sharpedo. So you surf up north to get to Route 16. You pass through Ula Ula Meadow, and there's a couple of Team Skull thugs guarding the entrance to Po Town, so we take care of them, and some old man blocks the way and pretty much doesn't let you go in at first. Get out of my way, asshole! Team Skull's pretty much taken over the whole town. In the Pokemon Center, they spit some dope-ass rhymes to you, but they pretty much beg you for money and heal your Pokemon for 10 zenny. Thanks, homies. 
you battle your way till you get to the mansion, so you find all these notes with passwords, and look at all the empty booze bottles. These guys seriously know how to party. Where was my invitation? Anyways, you finally get to Guzma, and you see the young goose. After you beat him, the young goose heads out to safety. And look, there's a whole box of all the Bugsy crystals. I guess they steal all the Z crystals and hoard them because he wants to be the best bug type user. Once you leave the mansion, the old man is back again with that young goose. Then Acerola runs up. I guess that's her uncle, his name is Nanu, and I guess he's a police officer. Acerola takes the young goose back to the Aether house and asks you to meet her there. Once you get back, things don't seem to be going pretty well. I guess Team Skull came back right after Acerola left, and they kidnapped Lily and Cosmog. Great. Where were you at, how? He's all down on himself because he wasn't able to help. Gladian comes running in and he's all furious because Lily and Cosmog were taken. Why do you even care? He seems to know where they took her though. So he asks you and how to come and help him to save Cosmog and Lily. You guys meet up on a dock so you can take a boat to rescue her when Officer Nanu comes back. Why don't you help us? You're a cop. Do your damn job. It turns out that he's the island's kahuna. He wants to battle you to make sure you're ready for the mission ahead of you. Anyhow, once you beat him, you get the Dark Sea Crystal. So Gladian seems to think that they took her to the Aether Paradise. I knew that place was suspicious. So you head on over to the elevator and ride it to the top floor. Faba is there and he seems really sinister. For some reason, it seems that Gladian and Faba know each other. Anyways, you battle him and once you've won, Gladian demands to know where Cosmog and Lily are. He knows he's lost already, so he sends us to the basement floor where supposedly they're being held. Or not. So you check the secret labs A and B, only to come up shorthanded. You look at one of the computer screens and it seems that they have some research on Cosmog and they basically want to use its power to open up even more ultra wormholes. Apparently doing this is going to kill Cosmog. No, you can't hurt Nebby. So we head up to the next floor when Wick finds us. She refers to Gladian as Young Master, so she's still on our side. Gladian definitely has a history with this place because everybody here seems to know him. She also heals our Pokemon. Gladian asks her if she has any idea where Cosmog and Lily are, and she says she thinks that they're with the president. Which makes sense. So that's where we head to. Fob is trying to guard the door, so we just smash right through. And once we get to the next room, it's full of Team Skull thugs. Great, so the Aether Foundation and Team Skull have been working together this whole time. After you battle through a bunch of Team Skull guys, you have to face Guzma because Gladian lost. He's way stronger than he was last time. Anyhow, now you can finally go save Lily. President Lusamine seems to be talking down to Lily when you arrive. So Lusamine is actually Lily's mother. Jeez. Lusamine basically disowns Lily because she ran off with the Cosmog because they were doing pretty harsh experiments on it. Lily begs you for your help to go save Nebi, so you follow Lusamine into some secret laboratory. Inside there's a bunch of frozen Pokemon. Gladian and Hal run in, and it's at this point that you guys start to realize that Gladian and Lily are siblings, and Lusamine is their mother. What a lovely family reunion. Lusamine hates Gladian just as much, or probably even more than she hates Lily because he ran off with Type Null. Type Null was actually an experimental Pokemon that was being designed to be able to kill these Ultra Beasts. Gladian felt bad for it because they were doing all kinds of tests on it, just like they were doing with Cosmog. And he felt that he resonated with the Pokemon because he was constantly subjected to the way that Lusamine was raising him. That's why he ran off and joined Team Skull to try to find some strength. But in reality, he was just rejected by Team Skull as well. So yeah, in Lusamine's eyes, she hates her kids because they ran off with her Pokemon. Anyways, they're trying to convince her to stop, but she just does not give a crap. She has Cosmog locked up in this box, and she wants to drain all of his power to open up a bunch of ultra wormholes. And well, that's exactly what she does.
Once the ultra wormholes have opened, that big jellyfish monster comes back out. Gladian takes initiative and starts calling out orders, so you have to face Lusamine. She uses a bunch of girly fairy type Pokemon. Once you've beaten her, she gets all angry and decides to teleport through the ultra wormhole before it disappears. And well, now that Guzman and Lusamina are gone, there's not really much to do. Lily checks the box that Cosmog was in, and now he seems to look weird. He looks kind of like a coin. I liked him better before. But now that Lily is safe and we have Cosmog, it's time to get out of here. Lily and Gladian are still a little worried about Lusamine though. Even though she is kind of crazy, they don't feel right with their mother being stuck in an ultra wormhole. And that's understandable. They want to figure out a way to get her out of there. But for now, it's time to rest, so Wick sets up a place for you and the others to take a breather. After all, this is where Lily and Gladian spent a lot of their childhood. So on your way to the docks to finally leave the Aether Paradise, she has a new look and demeanor. She seems to be carrying herself with a lot more confidence than the shy, timid version of herself in the beginning. In the laboratory, Gladian found the Moon Flute, so he gives it to you guys. It appears that Lusamine was looking to summon a legendary beast at one point. But since we have the Moon Flute now, Lily thinks that the best way to look into getting through the Ultra Wormhole is to find the Sun Flute and to summon the legendary beast and ask for help. So that's her quest now. Anyhow, it's finally off to the next island so we can complete our island challenge. Finally. Here we are on Pony Island. Gladian sees us off. He had ran off two years before she did, so she had to spend two years with her mom without Gladian being there. And she sort of followed in his footsteps by leaving with the Cosmog. He apologizes for leaving her behind, but it seems like they have a decent relationship with each other now. So you and Lily ask this guy who appears to be the leader of Seafolk Village where the Kahuna is. He points you in the direction of Hapu. I guess Hapu lives on this island. She's the only real resident too. The rest of the people here are all just travelers and traders. So let's head on over to meet Hapu. Once you get to her house, you ask her about the Kahuna, and I guess there is none on this island. Great. Her grandfather used to be the Kahuna, but he passed away. So, this is it. We can no longer complete the game. Just kidding. But Lily tells Hapu what she's trying to do with the ultra wormholes and stuff. So, Hapu decides to show you guys to the Ruins of Hope, so maybe Cosmog will react to something in there and give us a clue. After you push some blocks around, you get to the ruins. Cosmog seems to not be responding at all, and look at that. Hapu just got a sparkling stone. It seems that she was chosen to be this island's kahuna. Congratulations, now let's battle so I can finish my damn island challenge. Too bad, we gotta go get the other flute. Since she is the Kahuna, Lily finally asked the question she should have asked when we first got here. Where is the Sun Flute and how do we summon the legendary Pokemon? She gives us some pretty good advice, basically saying the Sun Flute is located on Executor Island. And to summon the legendary beast, we have to go to the altar on top of Vast Pony Canyon with both of the flutes. Wow, that's helpful. So we head on back to town, she says sayonara and then we take a boat over to Executor Island. Once you get there, you have to battle this big ass Executor. And by the way, he's dragon type. You're welcome. Anyhow, after the battle, it starts to rain, so you guys go run into a cave. She starts talking about a memory she had when she was a kid. She went out in the middle of the streets while it was raining and was dancing, and her mother ran out to stop her. But then her mother ended up dancing with her and laughed about it all night. Yes, the same Lusamine that just tried to kill us. I guess she was a good mother. Lily seemed to have a really good relationship with her mother. I'm pretty sure Gladian probably did too. Until Lusamine snapped and got obsessed with the Ultra Beast. Lily has something that she wants to say to her mother when you finally get to the Ultra Space. So maybe there's hope that things can go back to the way that they once were. Once the rain lets up, you go ahead and get the Sun Flute. And now it's time to meet Hapu in front of the Vast Pony Canyon. Oh wait, get out of my way! There's a bunch of Team Skull people here, and they're all threatening you, telling you to save Guzma, which we're pretty much already doing anyways, then they all want to battle you. Yay. So once you've battled them all, you notice Plumeria has been watching the whole time. She basically tells them to shoo like a bunch of dogs, and then she apologizes. She feels bad for the way that she's treated you guys for the last few days, and she feels like it was all uncalled for. She just wishes you guys the best of luck in trying to save Lusamine and Gozma from the Ultra Space. And then she gives you the Poison Z Crystal. Sweet. See, I knew she wasn't so bad. 
So once you make it outside of the canyon, Hapu decides this is time for the grand trial, so you battle her. Wait a second, I've only completed 6 out of 7 trials, what's going on? Anyways, once you beat her, you get the Ground Z Crystal. So now we gotta pass through Grand Pony Canyon to get to the altar. This place is actually really huge, and it feels a lot like the Victory Road in all the other games. As you're making your way through the cave, you bump into this artsy looking girl named Mina. I guess she's actually one of the captains on this island, but she doesn't have a trial yet. You lazy bum. So she gives you the Fairy Z Crystal. Sweet. Once you get to the end, you stumble upon the seventh trial. There's no captain for here though. Okay... It's also the easiest trial in the entire game. So the totem Pokemon for this one is Komoo. He's fighting in Dragon type, so one fairy attack should do the job. And there we go! We got the Dragon Z Crystal. We're almost done. And now we finally make it to the altar. You and Lily have to stand in these spots and play the flute at the same time. A huge beam shoots out of the altar and triggers a huge phenomenon. Nibby comes flying with Lily's bag. There we go. Nebby evolved into Solgaleo. Solgaleo recognizes you and Lily and even understands you, so he's very much willing to take you to Ultra Space. And finally, here we are. Yeah, this place is pretty weird. You find Guzma in there and, well, he's not really happy about it. He says he doesn't get scared very often, but this place is pretty damn creepy. And he says that Lusamine has completely lost her mind and there's pretty much no convincing her to leave. So you find Lusamine, she pops in with a bunch of those little jellyfish monsters. I guess they're called Nihiligos. And she immediately just starts roasting you guys. Damn, calm down. She's extremely obsessed with this place and she wants to live there forever, but she's definitely not thinking straight right now, so we gotta knock some sense into her. Lily gets all pissed and tells her off, and then you have to battle Lusamine. But wait. What? What? What the hell is going on here? So she turns into this giant jellyfish monster, and then you have to battle her. She is very, very tough. Well, once you get past the Clefable, she's pretty easy. After you've beaten her, the jellyfish monster that's taken control of her body seems to be trying to attack Lusamine in some way, so Lily calls Solgaleo to come help. Now Lusamine is unconscious. Lily still seems to have faith in her though, so that's good. Anyways, we gotta get the hell out of here. Once we get back to the normal world, Hapu's outside waiting for us. She takes Guzman and Lusamina on her Mudsdale down to the base of the mountain to get help. So now it's just you, Lily, and Sogaleo. Lily has a touching little conversation with Sogaleo, but she feels that Sogaleo should join you on your travels. She wants Nebby to see the entire world, and thinks that Nebby will enjoy its time more with you. So, we battle Nebby. Once you finally capture the legendary beast, Lily wants to be by her mother's side right now. So she says goodbye to you, and Nebby. After all the commotion, Officer Nanu is there waiting for you. It seems that the Pokemon League is complete now, and he's here to pick you up to take you there. Let's go. Before you can actually make it up Mount Lanakila, you have to face Gladian. He actually wants to say thanks for helping Lily and his mother out. He seems to have a lot of respect for you now, so that's pretty cool. Anyhow, you face him and he's a pretty damn tough battle this time. So you pass up through Mount Lanakila. It's not quite like the Victory Road, but it's a pretty fitting milestone. Just a lot of empty snow area. Once you make it to the stairs to Pokemon League, Hao wants to battle you. Great. But to be honest, Gladian and Hao seem like pretty fitting tests before you finally challenge the Pokemon League. Once we get up the stairs, 
There he is, El Kakui himself. He seems to be sort of a facilitator for the Pokemon League, and he wants to encourage us to do our best here. So like I said before, he wanted to get all the Kahunas to be the Elite Four members, so we're going to go ahead and start from left to right and knock out these leaders. First we face Hala of Mele Mele Island. He has his usual lineup of fighting type Pokemon, so go ahead and bring your fairy and flying types and you're good to go. I guess you could use Psychic too. Next we have Olivia of Akala Island. She uses her rock type Pokemon as usual, and she actually uses her Probo Pass this time. About time. Luckily my starter was water type, so this was pretty easy for me. And third, from Ula Ula Island, we have Nanu, I mean, Acerola. I guess her uncle didn't even want to be the Kahuna in the first place, so he said screw being an Elite Four member, so Acerola's doing it instead. So just make sure you bring some Pokemon that are ready to fight ghost types. So when Kukui formed the Elite Four, Pony Island actually didn't have a Kahuna because he had passed away. So Hapu wasn't even the Kahuna yet, so she gets a pass. So instead, we have the flying type user, Kahili. Apparently she had actually completed the island challenge in the past, so Kakui begged her to be an Elite Four member. I guess she's a very successful golfer as well. Anyhow, she uses flying type, so you know the drill. Bust out your electric and rock types. So we just beat the Elite Four, and there is no current champion, so I guess that makes us the champion. Sweet. So we go ahead and sit on our throne like a boss when we get a challenger. I thought it was done. Nope. We have to face Professor Kakui. Now just a little bit of history, Professor Kakui's actually faced the Elite Four in Kento, so he's definitely got some experience. He's a pretty tough battle, but as long as you know your stuff, you should be fine. Your team should be built enough by now. Anyhow, once you've beaten Professor Kakui, that's it. You're the first champion of the Alolan region. If you ask me, I think that calls for celebration. So everybody from all of the Alolan Islands gets together and you all have a huge party in Iki Town. The next day you get a ring at your doorbell. I wonder who it is. How comes Barge again? What do you want, bro? He wants us to come with him somewhere, and he seems pretty frantic about it. What's this all about? Oh no, Lily's leaving. She didn't even say anything. That's not cool. I guess she wants to go back to Kanto with her mother. She wants to stay by her mother's side until she's healthy again. Plus, she wants to go on her own adventures in Kanto. She really has changed a lot, though, since the beginning of the game. She went from this shy, timid girl to somebody who can actually stand up for themselves and can make decisions on their own. Good for her. Anyhow, this is it. This is our last goodbye. See ya, Lily. And that completes the story of Pokemon Sun and Moon. So, what's next? Well, there's actually a lot of mythical and legendary Pokemon in this game. So, let's go capture them. Now, we've already seen Tapu Koko in the beginning of the game. In fact, during the festival at the end of the game, Lily sneaks off with you to the ruins to thank Tapu Koko, but he actually comes out and wants to battle you. But there's still three more runes we have yet to explore, so let's go check them out. In each of these runes, there's some sort of strength puzzle that you have to get by. They're all super easy. All four of the deities are fairy type and one other type. Tapu Koko is electric, Tapu Fini is water, Tapu Hulu is grass, and Tapu Lele is psychic. Each of them has an ability that changes the terrain, so it can make him a little tricky to catch. But the terrain only lasts 5 turns, so just wait it out and you should be good to go. Also, if you go back to the Aether Paradise and talk to Gladion, he'll give you a type Null. Hell yeah! He also gives us a little insight about Lusamine. Apparently her husband, or his father, was the one who actually discovered Ultra Beasts, and he was lost in a wormhole and was never found again. He seems to believe that Lusamine's obsession with the wormholes and Ultra Beasts was her way of trying to bring him back. After all, Nihilego's parasitic and toxic nature actually brings out the worst in humans, so in some ways she was kind of a victim the whole time. Wick says that Lily and Lusamine went to Kanto to seek out Bill. Apparently he had a situation where he was combined with the Pokemon, so they think that maybe he has an answer to bring her health back. Now that that's all said and done, let's go check up on our boy Guzma. He actually lives in this house right off of Hawley City. What a nice place, and his parents seem really nice too. Why the hell is he such an asshole? He wants to battle you on the beach, so we go show him who's boss one more time, and he gets all mad when the Kahuna Hala comes up. It seems like he's starting to be a little more peaceful. In fact, after the whole situation at the Aether Paradise, he had broken up Team Skull. 
but he's still pretty arrogant. Maybe he'll come around. Anyhow, if you head up to the northeast side of Pony Island, you can head over to the Battle Tree. Once you get there, Blue and Red walk up to you. Oh look, they're all grown up now. You can choose to battle one of them. Of course I chose Red. His Pikachu is killer. Anyhow, once you've beaten them, you can go to the Battle Tree, which is pretty much this game's equivalent of the Battle Tower. Well, since we're on Pony Island, I figured I should show you guys this. If you head back up to the altar where you first met Solgaleo or Lunala, there's gonna be this wormhole here. Now you can only enter this wormhole if it's day or nighttime, depending on which Pokemon you have. Once you pass through, it's pretty much just an alternate reality where time is the opposite. It comes in handy if you're trying to catch Pokemon exclusive to just day or night. But there is one thing you can do in the alternate reality. If you head over to Ula Ula Meadow, there's this little passageway that leads to the lake of the opposite dimension that you were in. If you have your legendary beast with you and you head over to the middle of this lake, this little scene will trigger. And would you look at that, we have our own Nebby. Now in all seriousness, this is a legit Pokemon named Cosmog. It evolves into Cosmoem, which is that coin looking thing. And eventually you can evolve it to either Lunala or Solgaleo. And now it's time for the main event of the endgame content, the Looker Missions. So once you've beaten the game, if you head to the motel on Akala Island, you'll bump into these two FBI looking people. Who the hell are you? Obviously this is Looker, and this is Annabelle. She's got a cool ass suit. Basically, they're working with the International Police and they're part of the Ultra Beast Task Force. I guess they've been expecting you. I wasn't expecting you! Anyways, they recruit you to help them deal with all the Ultra Beasts from the wormholes that Lusamine opened. I guess there's still tons roaming around. Throughout these missions, there's going to be various locations on the map where Ultra Beasts are attacking and you have to go capture them. During these missions, you're provided with Beast Balls that work really well with capturing them. It's mostly just you and Annabelle doing all the work, though I never see her doing anything. But these missions are kind of funny, and they're cool. And you get to capture a bunch of interdimensional Pokemon, so that's kind of cool. Throughout these missions, Annabelle seems to be taking a lot of damage, like she's weak or something. Looker seems to be catching on to it throughout all the missions. It turns out that she's actually been into a wormhole, and the familiar scent from the wormhole attracts all these Ultra Beasts to her, so she ends up taking a lot of damage whenever she sees them, and they get really violent because of it. They call people who've been to wormholes a faller. Technically, you're a faller too, because you've been into a wormhole. I guess she's apparently from the Hoenn region. She had lost all of her memories when she came out of the wormhole, but all she remembers is that she guarded a tower there. Anyhow, once you've gone through all the missions and you've captured all the Ultra Beasts, Looker comes running in and says he's seen one more, but all the Ultra Beasts that were reported have already been captured, so they think he's full of himself. Apparently what he saw was on Mele Mele Island, so we can go check that out later. But first, I want to get paid. So he gives us 1 million zenny. That's what I'm talking about. But let's go check out this Pokemon he was talking about. If you go to 10 Carat Hill, and you go to this particular patch of grass, you'll find him. 